please hit the subscribe button for more content. Hi guys, it's Chris here from racingbetdata.com, uh, bringing you a video because we're jumping in um, at what seems to be a really popular time. We've had so many people um, send us messages directly um, via email or inquiry form through the website, um, also through social media, um, around what seems to be a little bit of a buzz at the moment where people have um, used our previous video uh, which was the one where we, we just mocked up um, uh, creating a database um, and then importing um, updates to that database, either daily, weekly, monthly, however suits you. Um, and what we did was analyze um, a two-dimensional table where we had um, um, store data down the left-hand side and we had Betfair rank across the top. Now, as I said in that video and those subsequent videos following, um, there was no real ream, rhyme or reason. That was something I used in there to give an example um, and to try and generate ideas for people to investigate their own. Uh, we obviously then went on to slices um, and uh, how those can give you uh, added dimensions to be able to analyze the data. So it's it's a really great, uh, for, for me, really great feeling to see that people have actually understood that video, taken it on um, and started developing their own angles, systems, strategies, whatever you want to call it. Now, what I will say, this video is designed, um, there's two parts to it, really. One is a reminder. So the reminder to everybody is remember to do your testing. Um, I'm conscious that some people might be just lumping all of that data into one, putting it into a pivot table, and then back fashioning something that looks like on paper to be a profitable strategy, but they've actually done no real testing, You've just done the development. So those videos that I did before, I'm going to do similar again today, where we look at splitting, uh, and whether that's odd even months, whether it's um, odd even weeks, whatever you want to do, but you need um, two sample sizes. One is to to um, to develop and then and, and train, and then the second one is to test. Um, and then the, the bolt-on part to that is then using um, the t-test to give significance. So it might show you uh, a profitable system even. Uh, during development and testing, but that might be skewed by one freak result within there. Certainly, if you're looking at um, higher odds, so you do need to use the t-test. Now we've got the example download page on both websites, uh, which give you the statistical relevance file. Um, there it is, so you can use that. And what I'll do is embed that formula into the data. Uh, and the final thing we haven't really touched upon is um, size. So. Obviously, there are restrictions around the output because we don't want everybody going in trying to grab a limited amount of data because it would just crash our system. It'd crash your um, Excel. It'd probably crash your PC. Um, and if everybody was trying to do that at the same time, it'd have a huge strain on the server and, and make it impossible. That's why there's a, a cap limit uh, to 60,000 records, which is you know unfiltered, is more than uh, enough data to be getting out in one hit. And if people are building up their database, they shouldn't need to be doing that apart from a one-off. You should be going in on a regular basis, so daily, weekly, and just adding to your database to ensure that any new trends or anything else that's changing uh, is shown and displayed in your database, because otherwise you're working with out-of-date data. So one of the things people are saying is um, that their Excel is struggling. It's becoming too big in size. Maybe their PC isn't equipped with the latest um, software or updates, uh, low memory, whatever it may be, but they're, they're struggling. So that brings me on to, to this video, the first part of this video, uh, and that's the customized columns option that we've brought you. Now I have done a video on this in the past, but it's here as a little reminder. Now, obviously if you're not using this or you haven't used this to date, then you are exporting everything uh, into Excel when you do your exports and your downloads. If you're only using 5% of it, why export the full amount? If, if it's not needed. So what you can do on here is click the edit button. There's instructions above, but you can take out all of the information that's not being used. So if you're not using the jockey trainer, the weight, or whether it's wearing headgear, um, any of the, the, the tick drop uh, reductions in play, any of the history around um, the last five, wins in the last five, if you're not using any of it, just take out what you don't need. Now, if I click the update button, 
and go to, so remember these three, weight jockey trainer, because those are the three most visible. Now, if I go to the dashboard and if I just leave everything as is and go to yesterday, and I'm just going to send it to screen to give it to you as the visual. Um, you will see that those columns that I've taken out will not be displayed. And that'd be the same if I sent it direct to Excel. So any changes that I make in that customized columns um, option on the web page are then recorded. And you can see here, you get a notification. So if, you, if you've forgotten you've done that and you want to turn them off, you've got a direct link in there. So you can see there that weight jockey trainer now removed from the output. Uh, so if you're struggling for space, um, you can turn those settings off and that will make sure that your exports and your if you're building up a database, uh, it's not clogged up with data and information that you're not really using. Now, if you think you're going to use it in the future, then obviously keep it in. But you can be a little bit um, clever with this if you want, and bespoke it and update, uh, update that page um, how you see fit. And that might help you space make your sheet perform better uh, and take up less room okay so back to the database what i'm going to do is go in and i'm going to export um, some more data to add to my database because i haven't maintained it this week um, and then i'm going to pop over into uh, the database itself uh, and talk a little bit more about the the testing both um, developing and, uh, and splitting out developing and testing and then also uh, generating the, uh, the, the t-test to give you the p-value. Okay, so we've got our data. We have now created our um, dashboard, all contained within the RBD data tab here. Obviously, you can name it as you please. Uh, this is my data file. Um, the database sits in here, and then I've got the pivot table. So the previous videos, um, we'll go into those in a bit more detail. Um, there's no point repeating what I've already um, already gone through. Um, and same with the slices. So I've created a couple of slices here. So we've got a, a day one across the top. Now you can change the, um, the layout of these slices by um, changing the number of columns. So normally they'll display uh, one column and multiple rows. In this instance, I've added columns because it's days of the week. Uh, and you can filter these as you please. Um, so I've got the development tab here and then I have a testing tab. Now what I've done is replicate on the testing tab exactly the same as what I have on the development tab, apart from the fact that the, um, the even month column, again, please refer back to the, uh, the previous videos um, that will show you why we, we, um, we develop on even months and then test on odd months or vice versa. Um, those do not interact with each other. So the two tabs, these are kept separate and the way you can change those. So if you go to report connections, you can see here that this slicer is only interacting with the, uh, the tables on the development tab, the testing tab, they are unticked. If you go to the testing tab, look at the report connections, the same for that one. So this, this um, even month, so that enables me to change um, the settings on the two separate tabs. Otherwise, what I change on one will pull through on the other, and that's not what we want. Okay, so we are just going to have a look at some of the race courses uh, that are um, taking part today uh, and see if I can um, develop a very quick system. What I'm looking at here is Betfair rank across the top, the date down the, the left hand side, no other filters uh, apart from the day of the week, so I've filtered it to weekday only. Again, do not get hung up on this. This is similar to what I've done in previous videos. This is what some people are doing, uh, but potentially not showing you the um, the whole filtering control uh, that they have set on, on those. So um, this video is, uh, again, designed the second part of this is to, to show you the importance of testing. Okay, so let's um, put a filter on Perth keeping the days of the week set to Monday to Friday. Uh, on this tab here, we've got true selected and on the other tab, it will uh, be fixed to false. Um, I'm just gonna scan an eyeball along here. Now, obviously you can see there's a massive uh, profit here on the Betfair rank 12 horse historically, but that will be due to one or two big wins uh, last year as an outlier, nothing in the years before. Uh, so the eye is drawn to um, 
ranks one to three. Now, obviously, we could just highlight one and two, uh, sorry, one and three, and leave out two because that is a negative. Although the last three years that is showing uh, as a profitable um, selection if you're backing the second favourite there. Uh, in fact, in 2022, if you're back the first, second, and third favourite at Perth on, on these even months, Monday to Friday, they, they would have all given you a profit and obviously the, the others in the race would not have. Now, I'm using the win return. You can use the place return. You can look at lay, uh, lay returns, whatever is, um, is your fancy, really. Uh, that's, again, down to user preference. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm showing you how to do it, how you can use the data to uh, analyze uh, and, and, and test, okay? So that's what I've looked at blind on development. Uh, it's returning a 287 pound profit, as you can see down the bottom there, and it is uh, over about 450 races, as you can see here. And if I select those, you can see 447, okay? So let's look at the testing tab. Now you can see here, this is automatically selected Perth. We've got Monday to Friday selected and we've got false. And if we look at those um, first three ranks, you can see that those are profitable. So £300 and more selections. Uh, so you can see here that that's 829 selections. So instinctively that says, OK, so I've tested, I've developed something. OK, very loose. There's not much to it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very loose strategy. There's no uh, consideration for for anything in pace rating or stalls or anything like that. This is purely just looking at the rank. Um, and it looks like back in the first three in the race is profitable. So does that mean you then just go all in and start putting money on it? Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, the t-test is the next thing to look at the p to generate the p-value. We've spoken about this in separate videos. There's plenty of literature on the website uh, and uh, on, on the internet in general, if you want to find out a bit more about that. But statistical relevance tests should always be your go-to uh, when, um, when looking at a system. So I'm going to bring up that file now. Um, and it's also worth adding that even if you were to uh, venture in, put some money behind this, you should always test at low level stakes. In fact, you shouldn't even put money on it. You really shouldn't. You should just be paper trading, monitoring it for a period of time. I know we've done the development, we theoretically tested this against odd months, but you should still monitor. There's no, absolutely no rush to get involved. If you've found something that gives you an edge uh, and you've tested it uh, and you're adding your data and your database is up to date, there's no reason that that edge should not erode. If you've t-tested it, you've tested it this way, um, you can paper trade for a couple more weeks, months. It's not going to kill you. Um, and what you might find is that something does go out of sync and that first period starts losing and you've you've saved yourself a few few quid. So let's bring up the st statistical relevance file now. Okay, so I've got some data in here already. I'm just going to clear this out. Um, these are the top three. So these are all the calculators. We just need these three, um, three set cells populated. So we're going to look at the testing. So the number of bets. 829, we've already got that. So we can pop that in here. And then the yield, okay, so that's the return on investment. And that's very easy to calculate. So all we do here is, is sum. So we've got 3,083, I can even do it down here, 3,083. Uh, and then against the, num uh, the, the, the amount you would stake, so that's basically uh, the, the, the count times 10, because this is simulated based on a 10 unit stake. So 8290. And then to generate the ROI uh, for, for this selection, we um, multiply in here. Uh, so I divide in here, so 3.63. So if I bring the statistical relevance file back to 3.63 and we can round that. And then the average odds, okay, so there's a number of ways in which we could do this. We could pop another table in, another pivot table. We could copy off this and all you'd be doing instead of uh, account or sum of Betfair rank in here, you could just add the Betfair odds uh, bet for SP in, uh, and then change it to average within the values. Um, but I'm going to show you an, an alternative way of doing it. Let's just select by clicking on each one of these. This will give us a, a sheet for each. So the first rank, the second rank, and the third rank. Okay, and then we can combine them all. So I'm going to take the um, third rank, select the whole data set, take it into the uh, first rank, 
paste it at the bottom, go to the end of that data range, and then find the second rank. Do the same, copy the full data range, paste it into the bottom, and then we can find the, oh, I'm just gonna do a double check on this just so you can see um, Betfair rank. So we've got all the twos, looking at the column here, we've got all the twos, all the threes and all the ones, um, even month false. So that is pulled direct from the pivot table, okay? Uh, what we want to look at is the average odds. So Betfair SP, just to do a quick check, make sure there are no zero odds or any anomalies in there, uh, or no blanks, all looks good. So we can literally just hover over that and I'll give you the average down the bottom there. So 5.468, so 5.47 rounded. So I'll bring that file back up. 5.47 and what that does is give us our p-value uh, and the one in x probability so you can see here that this has given us a p-value of 31.3 percent now if you look at the text here and this file was available on the website as i've said what we're looking at is a score um, below um, one really one percent down the bottom here oh well, basically, if anything below 5% gives you moderate evidence against the thesis that this is a result of a chance, uh, below 1% considered strong evidence. So that's really where you're looking. And anything under 0.1 is very strong. We're at 31. So a one in three chance that what we've done there is just down to luck. There is absolutely no skill involved. And that is what I'd expect because we've not put anything other than random dates, um, random track, and pipped the, the top three. There's no other system strategy consideration going on. So you do need to obviously monitor this, uh, be a bit cleverer of what you're doing because something's happened in one set of circumstances and you've seen it on the second set of circumstances does not mean that it's going to carry on. You need to be back testing thoroughly. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is I don't want people getting burnt. Um, I'm sure you are all doing your diligence on this, um, but you cannot be safe enough. Test, test, test again. That is the golden rule. Um, we've shown you how you can do it um, easily with your outputs. So you can generate your development and your testing, and then using the p-value calculator, the statistical relevance file will give you that backup. And then when you do decide to go in, please make sure you're doing it using small stakes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more useful content.